Hey everyone, Bigger75 here at Caven Slam doing a new movie review with my friend Alex Neff here. I'm Alex. So what do you do? <laughs> I've done stage on, on stage acting since I was five years old and I've very recently started getting into doing some filmmaking and you I just, just like did today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. All day it was great. We're also Jets for Life. Yeah. We're in our side story together and our uh, our uh, team of Jets remain very close today, so hashtag Jets for Life. Exactly. <laughs> We're here to talk about the movie Logan, which is the third installment, third and final installment in the Hugh Jackman Wolverine trilogy and the last Wolverine film for Hugh Jackman. Like, no more. He's done. Completely sad. done. It's really <laughs> sad because if you're like me and you've grown up with Wolverine since you were a kid, or at least Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. Um, it's almost like an end of an era and the beginning of uh, almost like a passing of the torch or just a continuation of the X-Men franchise, but without him, it's... It's going to be weird, which is interesting because on paper, Hugh Jackman shouldn't be so good at Wolverine. Yeah, Wolverine's supposed to be the short little... Yeah, he's being. supposed to be the short little Canadian stocky animalistic dude. Hugh Jackman is huge. This film takes place in 2029. Logan is, uh, does not go by Wolverine, uh, or he doesn't even go by Logan for half the week. Goes by, goes by his old name, James Howlett. Call back to X-Men Origins. Um, or just the comics in general. Or just the comics in general. Yeah. Right after X-Men Origins, Wolverine came out. Every single movie just ignored that that movie existed. Yeah. So, let's ignore that movie. Let's existed. just ignore it. Yeah. Even though, that, that even though there not. are some subtle callbacks, let's just ignore it. He's aging. He's, he's you know, of course we know that Wolverine is like hundreds of years old, but this time he's like to the point where he's actually aging physically and his... Um, his healing factor is wearing off. His healing factor is wearing off. He has to physically pull bullets out of his, uh, out of his chest and his arms. His adamantium is actually slowly killing him. His claws will get stuck halfway into his hands and he has to pull it out. There's a scene where he's pulling it out and blood is pouring out of the um, the, the, the entry point and it's just it's brutal. He has to take care of even a um, sick and aging Professor X who is 90 years old at this point is suffering from a degenerative brain disease in the world's most dangerous brain. That that's I'm glad you Got that, because I probably would never remember that. I watched it three times, I got it. <laughs> He's trying to get Professor X, like, as far away from people as possible. Yeah, they're trying. To, he's trying to buy a boat in the beginning of the movie and trying to get them on a boat and safely, you know. So they're isolated from the world, which is kind of, with almost every, with the last two X-Men, or X-Men, Wolverine films, uh, the Wolverine and this one, Logan's trying to keep himself isolated from the world because of just the damage that he causes and that they, the world causes on him, but that doesn't happen because guess who pops up? A little girl named X-23, or Laura, who appears to be his clone and also his daughter. Uh, she is on the run from some bad people. Uh, the villain, Donald Pierce, who has a cybernetic uh, cyborg arm. It's an played, offshoot of the Weapon X program. Weapon X program, yeah. yeah. Um, played by uh, Boyd Holbrook, I think his name is. Um, he is under the leadership of uh, Dr. Rice, played by the great uh, Richard E. Grant. Logan is once again put into the forefront of humans versus mutant fight and uh, goes out in the blaze of glory. I think we can, this is a spoiler review, so just right now, spoilers, spoilers, that warning go is away, going to being, turn back. The video. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably put this in the front of the video. Yeah. <laughs> spoilers, go away, because I'm about to tell you that Logan dies. And so does Professor X. <laughs> oh, man. Like, I was expecting Professor X to, to die. I like, was, I was the, back and forth. Yeah, the whole trailer is... Every single trailer was just, like, spelled out, Professor X is going to die. Or they were really... You could see it. They were really subtle hints. Like, the last shot of the first trailer was Logan had a shovel. And, the shovel, and you, oh, hear, man. you hear Professor X's uh, voiceover. Logan, you still have time. It's like, he's probably dead. I knew from the, the first trailer, yeah, Professor X is going to die. Mm -hmm. I wasn't entirely expecting Logan to die, partially because you know he he's yeah you know, he, he has that healing factor even yeah. even if it's wearing off he still has that healing factor it's still present and you know secondly because he's Hugh Jackman 
right. Wolverine. He's... Yeah, it's like he couldn't just die. Or yeah. if anything, I thought either two scenarios. One, they would just kill him off. Or two, they would flash forward to like 20 additional years later and he's really old. And then like, kind of like Godfather Part 3 where you see Michael Corleone and he dies like at a really, really old age. Um, whereas with this, you see Logan, he's he's maybe, he's taking care of Laura, Laura's taking care of him now, she's a lot older, and he dies like a really, really, really old man. Yeah. I thought that would have been cool, but I also think that if you're gonna kill, kill off Logan, if you're gonna end his uh, tenure, you have to make him go out and play some glory. Oh yeah, and it was so good. And like, you know, also, kind of raise the question of how the hell would that even happen if there's like no mutants and who is going to go toe to toe with Logan? Well, Logan! <laughs> Logan, yeah, X-24. It was a very interesting um, scenario to have yeah. Logan go up against himself and that could have... A I, younger version of a himself. A younger version, yeah. It could have totally backfired but they did it in a way that's so subtle that it doesn't... It's, it's interesting in itself but it doesn't really... It doesn't really take away from the whole fact that this is a movie about and Hugh Jackman. X-24 is nothing more than the mindless beast in the film. The villain is a scientist who is the son of Stryker. Oh, wait, I didn't catch that. He was, yeah. He was a son of... Oh, yeah. my gosh. That, yeah. That is... That <laughs> makes Everything makes so much sense. You can see the branding of Alkali Lake on... And their stuff and so like you know okay it's connected to alcohol I like a striker wanted to control mutants and this is the same exact thing that his son is doing trying to control mutants right. now whereas striker was trying to use outside sources to control mutants that already exist this guy is trying to create mutants that he can control x23 was the program not just for Laura but also like all the other children in the film continuous files like they have mutants just be pretty much born out of tubes, you know, like test tubes, normally just like instill them to be these super soldiers that like these secret weapons that could be used mm -hmm. to strike wherever they wanted. Monsters without without heart or compassion yeah. or any emotion. Exactly. Which is what X-24 was. X-24 was the pinnacle of their of their work. Frankenstein, a character together. Mm -hmm. That, you know, that's how they made X-24 and they based it off of Logan because well, he's an animal. He's an animal. He is the, oh, the, perfect, the perfect soldier in a way. That's what the movie's about. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Let's talk about what we liked about Logan. So right off the bat, Logan takes inspiration very much from old westerns like like the Clint Eastwood uh, films, The Searchers, um, Shane, The Gauntlet, um, a Clint Eastwood movie. All these movies that I mentioned feature these characters as loners, people who want to be alone and uh, you know, don't want to associate themselves with the real world uh, because of what it's done to them or what they have done to the world. A little calm A, a little calm B. Yeah. <laughs> and then something happens that causes them to come out of retirement and come back into the forefront. Sort of thematically, it feels like a Western in the sense that Logan yeah. is sort of this loner hero. To even drive that point home, there's that movie that Xavier and Laura are watching that, Yeah, the that hotel. is the movie Shame. Give them <laughs> quotes. At the end of the movie, after they buried Logan, yeah, she quotes that line, and it's just like, oh, it just comes full circle. Man. It makes and it really sells that 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 thematic idea that it is based in Western lore. This is the kind of hero Logan is in the Wolverine. The reason why I love that is because it continues to make him this loner. Except they don't paint it in the sense that it's a Western. It's more like he is a Ronin. A Ronin, yeah. That that his the grandfather. Uh, Mariko called him a Ronin, a samurai without a master, and that was kind of the theme playing out in the Wolverine. And that theme continues in Logan, but it's still, it, it's more so he is a loner Western hero. Being a big John Wayne fan, Clint Eastwood fan, I totally dig that. I totally love it. Another thing I liked about this movie is uh, the villain. You don't really get a lot of good villains in Marvel films, but Donald Pierce was, when he was on screen, he was a force to be reckoned with, I think. Oh, yeah. Obviously, he couldn't match physically to Logan. He was always one step ahead of Logan. He was always plotting and, and menacing in his own way to where, like, I walked out and I was like, he was a perfect villain. He also wasn't the head villain, obviously, because we, as we said, that it, that was, um... Oh, he's, he was on point, I mean... He was, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's the term I was looking for on yeah. point. Interesting to see, like, his hand, you know, that... I love that. 
I, I'm, I'm kind of amused how he's all like, oh, you're not the only one who, I who's love been that line, updated like, or yeah, whatever, whatever you're not phrase. not the only one who's been enhanced. Enhanced, yeah. It's like, well, what does your arm do except for, like, bend backwards? Like, yeah, his fingers can lot. bend back. <laughs> who made this guy in charge? Because you've got yeah. dudes with, like, actual guns for arms and, uh, like, like, robotic claws. It's like, this guy's just got an arm and he's in charge. He knows how to, like, push people's buttons. There's that scene he has where he's interrogating Caliban. And, yeah, oh, uh, that was so great. Yeah. Poor Caliban. <laughs> Dr. Rice, played by yeah. Richard E. Grant. Uh, who doesn't really have a major role. He kind of works in the background, and for a while you think that he's actually um, Mr. Sinister, but he turns out not to be. No. I, I really liked Caliban. Felt like a really weird character to put in there, but then when you think about it, um, he, he really does work oh, yeah. within the context of the film. In the beginning, you don't, you don't think Logan really cares about Caliban, but then like once, you know, Caliban's told to put, to, when they knock out, um, Pierce and they tell him to put him on the ditch of the road and then then he gets thrown in that situation and then Logan's like, where the hell's Caliban? Where the hell's Caliban? It's like you get like he really does care about Caliban. Yeah, it's just And he should because Logan Caliban way. is cares about Logan. He, there's that scene where he's really trying to like help me help you. <laughs> he sacrifices himself for the sake of for their sake. They kind of spoil that in the in the trailers because you see that brief shot of him. He's all scarred up and he's got the grenades in his hands and he, you see the clips. I've seen that clip in other trailers. Yeah, like, I think so. He's probably going to die in that scene. But when you see it in the film, and after seeing his arc and then how his story comes to an end, it's like, yeah, Caliban. What else did you like about the movie? I love that we finally got like the savagery that we needed this entire time. Oh, yeah. Oh man, like the only other time we came close to Logan being very true Wolverine was X2, X-Men United, oh, in that yeah. in the mansion scene where they're all, the Strikers forces are all you know, coming in and Wolverine is just like going all commando and just yeah. taking them out one by one. <laughs> I even that, think, was on, that was amazing. Yeah, I even think Lo oh, the, the Wolverine came close to it as well. I think we still got a step closer to that same savagery you're talking about because I think... I, I think having read parts of those comics where he does go to Japan, I feel like they they adapted that as well as they could have. When he's fighting those cholos yeah, well, to that, save his car. Yeah. And like you just see him put his claws like through their face. Oh, like, yeah. this is the movie we're in for, and that I am a... all sorts of on board. <laughs> <laughs> he's defending the car. Yeah. It's like, why would he defend the car? It's like, well, that's all he's got. I mean, he that's his job. He's not a superhero that saves, you know, saves mass you know large masses of people anymore he he's it, this is a simplified world where he cares about like the simple things for his own selfish reasons and for professor x yeah pretty much any selfish desires he really has is kind of brushed off to the side because he's really really focused on helping charles yeah charles has been his father figure ever since the first x-men movie yeah which is another great thing about this film is that it's about fathers and sons and daughters it's a very it's a family movie i mean thematically it's a family movie it's not obviously not a yeah. family movie you take your kids to see are <laughs> don't go don't take your kids to see logan it's not that <laughs> movie. Cool. logan finally coming to terms with um like his legacy and opening up to enjoying a family and having um an offspring and letting her sort of take on his legacy and trying not to make sure that she becomes the same the same thing he became, which is that last line before he dies, which we'll get to the, the final scene in a little bit. But don't be what they made you. One more thing I want to add about the good: not only give Hugh Jackman an Oscar, give give Patrick Stewart an Oscar. He was amazing <laughs> in this film. I, I mean, I don't think he's gonna be. I mean, I don't. I th I think we can still get another movie out of Professor X in him, but. In terms of ending his character, um, he gave an amazing performance, one that we never expected from this character. Uh, and it, it took a lot. This isn't your dad's Professor X that we knew Whoa. from the original <laughs> X-Men films. This Don't is... Leave me alone. This I is... Yeah. <laughs> he says the F-bomb like three or four times in this movie. He's so he's, good. He's, he's very cranky. He has like memory loss, so sometimes he doesn't remember who he is or who Logan is. Um, and also he's, he's struggling with uh, dementia and all these other mental illnesses in addition to his own mutant powers when he has those those giant mutant seizures that kill mass people that's how he killed 
half the X Men. Mo like ninety nine percent of the X Men. He yeah. pretty much eradicated them. Because in the Old Man Logan comic, I believe it's Logan that kills all the X Men under the control of Mister Sinister, and he has to sort of live with that. That's sort of the struggle he's living with as an old man. But they reverse that and make it so that it's Charles Xavier that did that instead of Logan. And Logan's also still living with the fact that he knows this, but he can't bring himself to talk to he can't, Charles exactly yeah, about it. Because it would oh, destroy man. him. Yeah. yeah. But then he remembers at the end of the movie before he dies, and that scene was, oh my gosh, it broke my heart. That scene where Logan, the X-24 comes in and steps and like, wait, what's, what's happening? Because you think it's Logan, then you cut to the close-up yeah. and it's, no, it's not Logan. No, it's, it's this X24. looks way younger. All of a sudden, shink. <laughs> but like in that one moment, you totally understand. Like, oh my gosh, that's not that's that can't be Logan. That's not Logan. What the hell's happening? But uh, it was it was refreshing in a way to see to see that because like it's it's the young Wolverine like we all know and love. But it's like, but he's a bad guy. Oh no! <laughs> I think this is going to be a, a very short category. Let's talk about what we didn't like. And I'm just going to start by saying, there's nothing I don't like about this yeah, movie. It, I think it's I think it's a rare perfect movie. I mean, you can argue with me till Kingdom Come, but I, I, I'm going to say that this is a perfect film. It, yeah, it, it knows what it wants to be from the end to end. It never, it never tries to be something else. Like, you really have to just get nitpicky to find something you don't like. Exactly. And That's the only thing I'm, I'm gonna... The only nitpick I really have is, is when, when Logan's digging the grave for Charles and he buries him. I wish we had maybe like a minute or... A, like a minute or two minutes of, of Logan to actually say something meaningful. Logan may not be the most speech or you know, he, he, just, he doesn't always he have verbal. Yeah, verbal, but the shit hits the fan and he's all like, okay, you go here, you do this. Like he knows how to get things done. I don't think there, we have yet to see a single moment where Wolverine is just speechless. He doesn't know how to respond. Xavier's been there for years. He's helped him recover some memories. He's been his father figure that he's never had for centuries. His father figure has been killed by a character who looks exactly, s exactly like, like him. And so and the first thing he says when he comes to rescue Charles is, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. Yeah, that was really cool. And Barry's, I mean, he's just like, he doesn't, he doesn't know what to say. This is one of the, this is the first time that we've seen Logan just not know what to say and yeah. be completely at a loss for words. And so like, What's the only thing that comes out? It's, well... At least there's water. There's water. And that's all he can squeak out. I think because, like you said, because there's so much relation, so much development within that relationship, because they're so, they have such a close bond, you'd think he'd have at least, at least another minute of something, of, of, of things to say about him. Well, let's also think about like what happens immediately after he walks away. Is he just he, beats up the truck. Yeah, that's true. So he walks over to start the truck, it doesn't start. And but then he, that, throws, but then that's the, he throws a fit about it. I mean, we've seen Wolverine get angry and just like a rage-filled monster, but it's always been very direct and very purposeful. And this is the first time we throw, see him throw a fit. His emotions are way out of whack. But I think that scene almost come up, comes off as comical to where you don't know if you should be laughing or if you should be crying because he's... Because he's... I don't, I don't see that funny maybe, at, maybe, at all. I, I see I, that as heartbreaking. Because I, like, I was confused when I when I was in the theater. I was like, "Am I supposed to be laughing because he's throwing a fit?" And this is and Laura's watching. Like, I'm never gonna be like that. Or is that, am I supposed to be still in shock or uh, you know crying because Logan's having a fit over his his dad's death? Now let's reel into our final thoughts. As I said, Logan dies in this movie. He gets impaled by a the roots of a tree oh. <laughs> and um, then stabbed to death by X-24. Uh, Laura shoots him with an enemy's bullet killing him and then they have a very tender moment which destroyed me. I was, sh this is the first movie I walked out of that I was shaking because like I said, this, this is like saying goodbye to an old friend and yeah. never coming back. And it was just, it was just the most, one of the most devastating movie experiences I've ever I've ever experienced but it was one of my favorite movie experiences now because of because of what we know of Logan because of how we've gotten to know him over the years and it really is the end of an era because this character means so much to fans so much to the world and I think he has been imbued as one of the greatest characters not only in comic book history not only in comic book film history but in film history period like I think it's 
I think they've set that high the bar with Logan to the point where you you talk about the top 10 best film characters of all time, Logan has to be in that conversation, I think. And like, I mean, this movie is just so good. Like one of my friends, they compared, you know, Logan is to the Marvel Universe what the Dark Knight is to the DC universe. Yeah, it's true. And, and I think it's <laughs> even raised the bar for, for, for the Dark Knight. It's like, it's... It is. It has uh, transcended not only the superhero genre, but in a way that I don't think any other film could have. And I think it transcends the Dark Knight in the way that the Dark Knight transcended the superhero genre. I think it's just sort of a, the evolution of the genre. And Dark Knight really set the bar for that. So you, you have to thank Dark Knight for sort of setting the bar for trying to do better. Yeah, it, um, I feel like Dark Knight, the mo what it mostly did was make it so... Like, superhero movies are best when they're a genre of movie that are just simply framed by superpowers. Yeah, we were yeah. talking about that in the car. Yeah. It's, a, it's a film framed with superhero powers and super, super, super beings, but it's not about superpowers. It's a very human story, which is what Hugh Jackman and director ja James Mandel is one of my favorite directors. He directed one of my favorite films, 310 to Yuma, with Christian Bale and Russell Crowe. He did... The Wolverine, which I love. And I think this is one of his best films to date. Like, he really is able to go all in for this film. And, you know, you, you get hints of his days when he directed Walk the Line, the Johnny Cash movie. You get, there's a Johnny Cash song at the end of the film that's really touching. Um, but overall, just, I could, we could speak on and on about this film. I think oh, yeah. Kind of <laughs> things up. I think this is one of the best superhero films ever made. It's one of the best X Men films ever made. This is the best. One of my favorite films of all time, and that's really rare for me, yeah, especially this early in 2017. You know, I had a couple of new favorites um, last year, but none of them can match Logan. Like, this is genuinely one of my favorite films of all time, I, I, having only seen it once. Um, and I honestly am, am petrified of seeing it again because I don't want to... Get wrecked. I don't want to get. It's not that. I don't mind that because I love getting wrecked like that in theaters. That's what. That's the emotional response I want to yeah. get out of a movie. But I don't want to. I don't want to get rid of the experience I had the first time watching that film oh, because that yeah. was a genuine, like all the surprises, all the shocks, and and the emotion that I felt when I finally like, it finally sank in. Like oh my gosh, this is it. Like there's nothing after this. This is we're done. Like. Maybe X-23 gets their own film in the future, but this is it. Logan is done. Also, it's a much needed rest for the character, I think. Oh yeah. He he, he enters, he starts this movie a very tired, weary character, and you immediately get that sense. And I think it's it's sad, it's not necessarily sad that he dies, it's, 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 a, it's almost a very happy moment, because you realize he's been living for almost 200 plus years. And you, I mean, you can't even imagine what that's like to live that lifetime and ra maintain your look and your youth and have so many people die around you and to finally be able to die for him, I, I think is very poetic and peaceful. So it's, a, it's, we're happy that he's, that he gets to have this rest. But I think it's also still bittersweet. Because it's like, very bittersweet. Yeah. It, it's, you know, cause I mean, yes, he finally gets his opportunity to die, but at the same time. He's never really had a chance to actually be a father figure. Like he was kind of, he was the uncle to all the X Men, but he's never had a chance to be a father figure. Yeah. Now all of a sudden he is, and that's snatched away from him immediately as he like lays there dying in front of his daughter. Yeah, and that's when she <laughs> calls him daddy. That just that wrecked wrecked me. I was like, I'm done. <laughs> just my eyeballs just start. Bursting with tears. It's oh, just, uh, release the damn. Release the damn. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the first moments where you truly see Logan like embrace everything people have wanted him to embrace his whole life, and it's like he's finally done it. Like it, it, he, yeah. you, you feel like these there's nothing left on the table. Everything that needs to be said has been said. Everything that needs to be done has been done, and he can he can die peacefully. He can die knowing that he's he's paid his dues. He's turned in his fees or whatever, and yeah. he's checked out. Not a moment too soon. Not a moment too soon. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. So, so I mean, Hugh Jackman just—if he didn't come to Fox and ask to do this special film, I don't know if we would have gotten this. So, thank you, Hugh Jackman, for everything you've done 
with the role. Every time trying to do more with this great character than you did in the past, you're the reason why we don't want to see another Wolverine because you're so great in the role. So I'm gonna give this film a, I'm gonna give it a perfect score, what the hell? I love this movie, I don't have any problems with it. Maybe that one little nitpick, but it's a nitpick at anything. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. I'm total five out of five, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10. All the monies, take it, what about you? Yeah. I'm gonna stick with that like it's five out of five yeah out of ten. exactly it, there's not a outstanding flaw in the movie before we wrap i'm gonna say this there should not be another logan after playing logan because there will never be another actor who can do what he has done with the character i know they're gonna do it but i don't think there should ever be someone to replace Hugh Jackman as logan i mean maybe you can do another a perfect comic accurate version of wolverine but you're, I don't think you're ever going to get to the, the the height of what Hugh Jackman has done with the role. He's a fantastic uncle character to the X-Men. And so, like, it'd be cool if after a while, you know, like, let, you know, Wolverine, you know, let Hugh Jackman's portrayal of Wolverine have its moment. Eventually, you know, Wolverine's a character to, that's worth bringing back. Mm -hmm. Eventually, you know, even if he's not the main focus, which is fine. He's as iconic now as like John Wayne, the Duke, Clint Eastwood, Michael Corleone, Vito Corleone, these great cinematic characters. I rank him so high with those people that that he should never be recasted. Yeah, yeah. that's our that's our review for Logan. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button somewhere down here in this somewhere around there. I think uh, over um... here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, or maybe it's down here. I think it's down here. Yeah, I think yeah. it'd be down hit, here. Hit the like button down here. Right. Alex, thanks for being on this review for Logan. He, he knows more about comics than I am. That's kind of why he's here. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Well, thank you all for watching. Have a great day. God bless and peace out. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had claws. <laughs> yeah. So great. We need, to, we need to prop claws. Triple peace out. <laughs> Let go of their rights to X-Men. <laughs> I mean, they're doing such a great job. <laughs> Their movies are hit and miss, and like, For the most part, yeah. yeah. As much as we like to pretend that X-Men Origins Wolverine doesn't exist, it does. Yeah, but, <laughs> but that's another conversation for another time. Yeah, 